what's up guys and welcome back to my channel this video is going to be one in which i show you how to get rid of the zip bulge on the center back of either a dress or a top i mentioned this technique slightly in my last q a and a lot of you guys wanted to you know show you how to do it practically so i'm going to work on the pattern cut a sample and then show you sort of what it looks like so if you guys like to see how it's done make sure to keep on watching give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and let's jump straight into it I'm going to be working with the following tools as laid out here. The first being my basic bodies front and back, which I already have a separate video for and it will be linked in the description box. I also have a long zip that is about 20 inches, give or take. I'm going to be working with that. And then I have my fabric scissors, paper scissors, and my tiny mini scissors. I also have about half a meter of fabric. I have some zip tape, my sharpener, my pencil, as well as any razor just in case i've also grabbed some paints because we're going to be pinning patterns later on i have my pattern master to help me with my curved lines as well as pattern paper so the first thing you need to do is to duplicate your patterns so i've duplicated my backs and my front as shown here i've added my one centimeter seam allowance all the way around for the back i've transferred my dart because i want to check for a sort of fitted silhouette i've added a one centimeter sort of zip allowance on the center back and as well around the hem for the front i just did the same thing transferred my dad added one centimeter seam allowance all the way around and left the center front the way it is because we want to cut it on a fold so we have one piece for the front so I went ahead to trace another back sort of panel so we can have a direct comparison to do when we've made our adjustments and corrections. So for this, my second one, we're going to be marking two centimeters or about one inch inwards along the waistline from the center back like so. So from that two cm or one inch point, we are going to connect it to our bust line area and down to our hip line area. But you have to sort of do it as a curve and not like as a pointed angle because the back of your body is like a nice sort of S shaped curve. So I'm just going in here to connect the lines like so using my pattern master and my pencil and you can go ahead and even connect it to sort of around the top of the bust line because the back sort of your top back is flat and there is nothing there really so i'm just erasing the straight line that was our original center back line before going ahead to add a one centimeter seam allowance all the way around the center back because we're going to be fixing a zip there so i'm just going in here to add along this side of the center back around the middle and down to the hip line sort of area so once that is all done, I'm just going in here to connect any other necessary lines and then relate or connect out my bust line and my waistline so we're able to notch those points when we've cut out this pattern. So as you can see, the old one is really straight and the new one is more of like that S-shaped curve that our bodies have along the back. So that's one of the main techniques that I use and it makes a huge difference when you shape the back, center back of your dress or your tops, especially when it's a fitted silhouette. It really does make a difference and that zip bulge on the back is way reduced after that. So now that I've made my corrections and I've cut out all of the panel and the patterns that I need, I'm going to go ahead and test with some fabric to see if I need to make any more corrections. So I've cut out my two back panels, one for the left and one for the right hand side. I've pinned my darts in place because when it's fitted is when you really get to see this zip bulge thing in action. When it's loose, you really can't tell. So as you can see, the new center back seam is more of like a curve and not a straight line line so i'm just going in here to sew my darts using a normal straight stitch this doesn't have to be perfect we're just doing this to check for errors so i went ahead and i cut out my front panel as well i just cut one piece for the front i've marked and pinned my darts and i'm going to be sewing the two darts on the front up remembering to do my back stitch at the beginning and at the end if you're not so comfortable doing the back stitch you can pull out the thread and tie 
two or three knots to secure your darts. So next up, we're going to go ahead and fix the zipper along the center bag. The first thing you need to do is sort of stitch up the bottom of that center bag if you don't want the zip edge to show around that bottom sort of point. So once that is done, I'm just going in here to pin my zip tape to the center back seam. I'm pinning along this side like so, matching this edge of the tape to this edge of the center back. And I'm going to pin from the beginning all the way to the end and repeat the same thing on the other side. I like to pin before going ahead to sew because the thing with zips is if you don't have both sides sort of symmetric, it shows on the center back as sort of wobbly or curved instead of being like a nice straight zip along the back of your dress or your top. So I, I usually have a lot of pins by the time I'm done pinning my zips as you can see here. So I've pinned both sides of the zip tape to both sides of the center back and I'm going to be stitching the respective sides to the back. So this side to that side and this side to that side of the back seam. So I'm going to take this to my machine and I'm using a tiny zip footer as you can see here and I'm sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance using a normal straight stitch. And when I encounter that zip head, I like to raise the sort of the foot, leaving the needle in and pull up the zip head and continue stitching. I don't take out the needle because that would just um, affect sort of the stitch. So once that is done, I just go ahead and I continue stitching all the way down, ensure not to catch the other side of the back on this particular seam here because that just means you have to start all over again. And then when it's time to do the other side, you start from the bottom and make your way all the way to the top to attach this particular side of the zip tape to this side of the back. So this is one very simple way to fix zips. Yeah, a lot of different ways that you can attach a zip to the back of a dress. This is one of like the most straightforward and simple ways to do it. And once that is done, I'm just going to pin together my shoulder and side seams of the front to the back so I can ensure this becomes one full blouse to check if there is any bulge or bulk at the back of this along the zip. So I'm just going to take this to my machine and sew on a one centimeter seam allowance. So in my shoulder point as well as my side seam, remembering to do my back stitch at the beginning and at the end to ensure nothing unravels. Once those seams are done, I'm going to go ahead and put on the blouse to check for fit. So this is what it looks like at the front and at the back, the bulges have been reduced by a great means. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I hope you learned something new and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.